Our planet has seen dramatic climate variations during its long history. We have seen immensely warm periods during the last half billion years, in which life expanded in an almost explosive fashion. We have also seen great ice ages with mass extinctions of life occurring. In more recent times, roughly 62 million years ago, a major astrophysical event ended the age of the dinosaurs that was eventually followed by a long climatic cooling. 30 million years ago, Antarctica froze over for more than 10 million years, then thawed out again and froze over once more and has remained so. With the climate getting increasingly colder, Greenland froze over a few million years later. The human presence began a few million years after that, roughly two to three million years ago, which is also the time frame when the modern epoch of the Great Ice Age cycles began, called the Pleistocene epoch. At first, the Ice Age cycles were short, in the order of 41,000 years, but in more recent years, as the Earth continued to get colder, the glaciation cycles became longer, and the warm periods shorter. We have a record of the last half million years of these cycles preserved in the ice of Antarctica. These samples are telling us that the wonderful warm climate that we are enjoying right now is an anomaly. It is one of the periodic holidays that the Earth gets from its normal glaciation climate. Our warm holiday is called the Holocene epoch. The difference between the current holiday climate and the normal climate is enormous. The ice core samples from Greenland indicate that the coming cooling will be 30 times larger than the cooling had been during the Little Ice Age in the 17th and 18th century when crop losses caused death by starvation ranging from 10% to as high as 30% of the population in some areas. Since climate is enormously critical for agriculture and the current holiday is ending, it becomes critical to explore how the climate system works. Since all of our warmth comes from the sun, the critical factor appears to be the sun. But this is deceptive because the sun is not its own master. It is powered from the outside, not from within. The sun is not a nuclear fusion furnace heated from the outside. If it were, the emperor of the sunspots, the deeper levels below the surface, would be brighter instead of being darker. The sun is darker at the deeper levels because it is heated at the surface by electric energy flowing into the sun. Space is filled with electric energy, called plasma. Researchers at the Los Alamos National Laboratory have come to the recognition that 99.999% of the mass of the universe exists as plasma. Free-flowing atomic particles and derivatives are called plasma. They are electrically charged, but they also have mass that responds to gravity. Electric plasma powers our sun. We live in a plasma universe that is electrically charged and is powered by it, including every sun. The intensity of the solar activity varies with the density of the electric plasma surrounding it, which is powering it, and the source for this lays outside the solar system. Electric currents typically flow between stars or solar systems, while we cannot see the electric currents flowing in space, we can see their effects in the form of the filamentary alignment of stars into strings like beads on a necklace. We can see the same also happening with galaxies that are largely lined up into strings. The star closest to the Earth that is a part of the local string is Alpha Centauri. The plasma stream that powers the solar system appears to originate there. 
The evidence of the inflow is found in the bow shock of the solar heliosphere. A bow shock occurs when the inflow of plasma currents is impeded by an object in its path. The solar heliosphere is such an impeding object. The heliosphere is a plasma sphere inflated by the solar winds. The solar winds are plasma streams that are accelerated away from the sun by electric interaction to velocities of up to several million miles per hour. As the fast-moving winds slow down, they begin to bunch up, which eventually creates a shock front called the termination shock. The shock front forms the inner edge of the heliosphere. Eventually, the plasma winds come to a full stop and form a plasma wall called the heliopause. The incoming interstellar plasma flow has its own shock front, the bow shock, from where the incoming plasma now feeds into the plasma wall from the outside. The face of the solar system's bow shock points to Alpha Centauri as the origin point of the incoming interstellar plasma. The plasma bow shock is physical evidence that we live in an electrically powered solar system. On the way to the heliosphere, the current passes through the Oort cloud, a sphere of roughly a light year in diameter containing trillions of objects of asteroid light space junk apparently held in space by an electric charge. The origin point, Alpha Centauri, is 4.24 light years distant. Plasma in space typically moves a thousand times slower than the speed of light. On this scale, it takes plasma 4,000 to 5,000 years to cross the interstellar distance to the sun, which is a factor for the end timing of the interglacial period. The interglacial period is apparently the result of an intense pulse of concentrated plasma that for a period flows into the interstellar streams. Plasma in motion is an electric current. As such, it is electromagnetically self-aligned into tight channels. As it flows, it attracts interstellar plasma along its path. The strength of the resulting current that affects our sun and our climate reflects directly the density of the surrounding plasma in space and its cyclical high-density poles. The ice core assembles tell us that the interglacial warm periods occur in short pulses every 100,000 years. Evidently, pulses of high plasma density occur in interstellar space that originate with a large electric discharge system. Repetitive discharge systems are common on Earth. They evidently exist also in space. A common repetitive discharge system is the dump bucket in water parks. It is a very slow pulsing system that discharges in cycles of minutes, depending on the rate of inflow. The party strobe light is also a repetitive discharge system. It pulses 10 times a second. Electric discharge systems are also common in the galaxy. The pulsars are falsely recognized as fast-spinning neutron stars. They are, in fact, electric systems that pulse multiple times per second. Lightning, too, is an electric discharge system. It pulses several times per hour. Why wouldn't we see similar systems operating in the galactic scale that pulse according to the size of that scale in 100,000-year cycles? The last interglacial pulse began over 15,000 years ago, which started the transition out of the last ice age. It seems to have lasted till about 5,000 years ago, when an apparent reversal began. The onset transition to a higher energy state took about 3,000 years to stabilize to point A, 
with a similar transition evident in the turn-off phase to point B, which is to be expected. The head of the Scientific Council of the Central Laboratory for Radiological Protection in Warsaw, Dr. Zbigniew Chaworowski, identified a 3,000-year general downturn in ice core temperatures, followed by a brief recovery and terminating oscillations. The terminating oscillations would likely be a resonating feature of the Oort cloud, an electrically charged cloud. Its reverberation appears to have caused the medieval warming and its subsequent collapse. With the system now being drained of its high-intensity pulse, we won't see the warm climates again that we had in the past, like the climate that enabled the agricultural revolution. Neither will we see the warmth of the medieval period repeated that gave us the golden ages of the Renaissance. They won't be repeated for 100,000 years till the next interglacial pulse comes our way. Once the high energy conditions were drained away, a series of shorter cycles began in the 200 year range. There is a spherical space of two tenths of a light year between the heliosphere and the Oort cloud, which could theoretically have a 200 year resonance cycle. The Little Ice Age, for example, gave us 200 years of cold climates that were followed by 200 years of recovery. Now that the next 200-year cycle has started, which is already evident in our rapidly weakening sun, we face the beginning of a potential 200-year downstepping towards ever deeper cooling, possibly three to five times the cooling that was experienced during the Little Ice Age. This deeper kind of cooling, deeper than anything we have ever experienced, may be upon us in 50 years' time.